Welcome to the Delmarva Almanac. Each week we connect you to the best of Delmarva. Like other almanacs, our aim is to tell you a little bit about our past, our present, and events in the near future. I'm your host, Dana Kester McCabe. University of Delaware professor Doug Tallamy has written a number of books to help the public learn about the value of native plants in our yards. I spoke to Doug recently on the phone to find out about his book and what Delmarva gardeners can do in their own yards this fall to create more eco-friendly landscapes. Well, I'm an entomologist, and my interest in plants has actually come through my knowledge about insects and how important insects are in all terrestrial ecosystems, uh, and in turn, how important they are to, to humans. I wrote Bringing Nature Home, the first book, when we moved into our, our new property. It was highly overrun with, with alien plants, with invasive species, autumn olive and multiflora rose and oriental bittersweet, and Norway maple and what have you. Uh, and I noticed that our local insects were not able to eat these plants. Now, in the past... A lot of people thought that was a good thing. You know, you garden and you don't want things to eat what, you, what you're gardening. Um, the problem is that we're doing that all over the place now, and um, all, of the, all of the insects that need to be produced by these plants are no longer there, which means birds have very little to eat, uh, particularly during reproduction. If you look more detail into this, you see that birds use a tremendous number of insects when they're feeding their young, and, and for the most part, those are caterpillars. Chickadees, for example, use between 6,000 and 9,000 caterpillars to rear one clutch of, of chickadees, and that's a tiny bird. So if you, if you plant plants like grape myrtle or golden rain tree or, or miscanthus, um, burning bush, all of our favorite ornamentals, or Bradford pear, uh, you're producing few to no insects at all, which means the chicken you can't breed in your yard. And if the chicken you can't breed in your yard, whose yard is he going to breed in um, when everybody's landscaping the same way? So I wanted to get that message out to, to the general public. To The real message is your piece of property is an important component in local conservation. We no longer have the option of, of opting out of, of local ecosystems. We have to participate or you're going to have ecosystem failure. And, of course, if we have ecosystem failure, then, then we have big problems for humans because it's, it's ecosystems that support us through all those ecosystem services people hear about all the time. So this was a book for uh, the homeowner to, to uh, emphasize the fact that, that the plants you put in your yard really are important. They impact all the things around you. And you can help your watershed, you can help local biodiversity, um, you can bring nature back to your kids and to yourself, all by choosing the right plant. This is the Delmarva Almanac, and we're talking to University of Delaware professor Doug Tallamy about native plants for the fall garden. Naturalist Jim Rapp has told us about the decline of the number of monarch butterflies we see here on Delmarva in the fall. So I asked Doug to talk about this specific example of a pollinator that needs native plants. Well, you've noticed a trend that people are seeing all over the country. The monarch uh, butterfly is in big trouble. Its populations have crashed for exactly the same reasons I was just talking about. We've taken away the only plant it can breed on, and that is milkweed. Well, well traditionally, we never planted milkweeds in our, our suburban gardens. Um, we always thought it was out in the field someplace. In the past, there was still quite a bit of milkweed left in agriculture on the edges of cornfields and whatnot, but we've come up with a new, new product, um, Roundup Ready Corn and Soybeans, where you can spray Roundup right over the crop and it kills all the weeds. Uh, and we, we kind of get spray happy and we kill all the weeds on the sides of the fields as well. So now you'd have nothing but dirt, no milkweeds in you know, tens of thousands of square miles of the Midwest, as, as well as now the East Coast in agriculture. And that has just clobbered monarchs in the last 10 years. Luckily, um, a lot of people notice this and there's a national movement, uh, a group called Monarch Watch and several other uh, groups that are working hard to put milkweeds back into the landscape, and there are more monarchs this year. It shows it's working already, and I think it's, it's going to be a success story. But I think we're going to save the monarch because we recognize that, that they have what we call host plant specificity. This, this insect needs these particular plants. When you, when you asked about what we should plant in the fall, and we're talking about monarchs, 
Um, it's very important to remember that monarchs need milkweeds when they're reproducing, but when they're migrating, what the monarch needs then are flowering plants, particularly in the fall, in September and October, so they can complete their, their migration, and fall asters are perfect for that. Doug had a couple of suggestions for gardeners planning to add native plants to their yards this fall. If you're going to plant in the fall, I would recommend early fall so you, it gives the plant a chance to get its roots out of the root ball into the, the native soil. And if you have a typically dry fall, like we often have around here, you want to make sure you water them. A lot of people think if you plant a native plant, it doesn't need care. <laughs> Not true. It needs to be watered just like anything else until it is established, and then it'll be fine. For a list of native plants suitable for this area, visit our website, delmarvaalmanac.com slash gardening, for a link to Doug's site and information about his book, which is also available in many local libraries. Well, that's all for this edition of the Delmarva Almanac. We'd like to thank our community partners, the Friends of Delmarva Public Radio, the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore, and underwriters, eatdrinkbyart.com, for their help in bringing this program to you, our audience. Our theme music was provided by Brightside Studio. This show has been a Moonshell production. Thanks for listening. Until we meet again, may the rhythms and tides of Delmarva bring you good fortune.